Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Let's go on at eight. Mm. Before, I mean, before A, excuse me, uh, uh, bar 10. It's the end of the theme. Or not? Yeah, it starts at A. Yeah, it starts. At least it's, it, it's at the end of a section. Yeah? Yeah. And of course, he, he, he goes on. Um, but what really connects it is the syncopas, yeah? And the syncopas, they kind of transist into now this, this constant. Keep that going, yeah? I, I, I think you have to force them to go on. It's, everybody feels kind of ending gesture, but, but you do the bridge and, 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 and go on. Let's, let's play from beginning of the line, two before A. that bridge much, much better. Um, how is the writing changing at A, apart from, from that? Now the cello has the single patience. What, what else is different? How is he distributing the voices, for example? Yes, exactly, exactly. I think the three of you, can we have that with, without uh, cello? Up to A. Yes, exactly. So you are, it's, it's, it's almost sounding like a, a violin trio. Forgive me. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's third violin over there. Can we play the uh, three violins again? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, balance isn't quite right. I, I, I miss, miss Anna a bit. Uh, bring that out, that you are close now. Yeah, that, that you are really like a very close tr trio going, going up. Try. Yes, yes. I know, it's a nasty place for the viola. I, th I think we changed. I think we changed. <laughs> oh, I, th I think I th the second violin took the E. And then we changed. I think, I, I think this change is just very, just too uncomfortable for the viola. I thought it was bad fingering, but then I saw everything. Well, but tell me why he's doing it. Probably why he's doing it like this? Uh, probably because the E here would sound more like a bass, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe because it connects with the next E? Anybody has got an idea why, why Brahms is writing it that way? Why he's not suddenly putting the E on the second violin. Exactly, it's voicing. 
it's just voicing. And it, I mean, you were playing this voice the whole time. Well, I'm sure he knew. I, I hope he knew that. <laughs> well, by the way, I, I also looked again up this. Um, how do you call that? This this forceps delivery? Yeah. How do you call it? When, when, what he said about the yes. his first quartets, mm -hmm. that that it, it was like a forceps delivery. Yes. And <laughs> you know what he what he said about this. It was also like a forceps delivery, but he was standing apart. <laughs> so there was him. Yes, kind of. Or I. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I had to smile, and um, and also what what wasn't clear to me is is that uh, it's very close to the other quartet, just two years later, and it's just I mean it's the opus before his first symphony. No, be, before his, I mean, he felt the burden of the history of, of string quartet, yeah? like already Mozart did when, when he, he dedicated, he wrote the six quartets for Haydn, which, which was a, a fruit of a long and hard work. That's what he said about, about it. Uh, even Mozart said that. And from then on, every, it was hard for everybody to, to write a string quartet. Beethoven started only with almost 30 writing quartets, did many other chamber music before, like the piano trios, string trios. And, and yes, Brahms, that's what's, what's said. He burned, composed and burned 20 quartets. So this could be the number 21? Yes, yes. I mean, imagine what, what we lost. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it, it is the voicing here. I don't think anybody hears that, this voicing. I mean, I think it's more obvious if the viola struggles on, on, that, on that two double stops. Yeah, so, so I would gently change the voicing. It, he couldn't, he was a perfectionist. He just couldn't write that into, in, into his, his score. Good. Thank you.